So hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Behind White Coats. I am Anita Kartka. And I'm Prasna Subedi, currently a fourth year medical student. Um, the vision of spreading hope and together- togetherness with this podcast was initiated. Uh, is only getting bigger and bigger, and we are so proud to have come this far and are forever grateful for your support. We also do have a special guest with us today, who is such a great example of leading by example. We'll know a lot more about her throughout this podcast, but for now, let me just tell you that see someone who has lived by the motto of Dream Big, Think Smart, and Inspire Others. Dr. Patrice Baptist, everybody. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Baptist. Uh, hey, hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, how are you? How are you doing these days? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, I'm sure you guys know I'm always busy <laughs> doing something. So it means I'm always tired as well. <laughs> but because I enjoy a lot of what I do, um, I'm the tiredness doesn't bother me <laughs> too much. <laughs> so I, I'm always tired. but um, I'm always, I always try and smile because I enjoy everything that I do. So, so yeah, I'm doing well today. I'm really happy to be here. I'm, I, like I said before we started recording, I'm really humbled that you guys look up to me and you wanted me on your podcast. So, um, yeah, I'm interested and excited to um, have a discussion today. Dr. Patrice, starting with um, the, the formal session and to ask you, um, it's basically that we are human beings in this world and we have different stories and maybe we play different roles for different people and in different situations of life. But there is typically one story that lets us define our entire life. So if you had to choose one narrative or one story to define you, what would that be? Uh, When you said it defines our entire life, that's quite strong actually. But um, I know what you mean. And I think if I was to choose one narrative, it's probably one that you probably know me for, which is um, the dream of becoming a doctor. Uh, so I, you guys said that you had watched some of my videos and obviously I spoke at the HLA conference and you know that I always wanted to be a doctor. Um, but I didn't come from a background of doctors. I didn't have the you know most opportunities. Uh, my school, you know, it was publicly state funded. Um, so it was a good school, but it wasn't, um, I feel equipped enough to help me um, get onto that path to becoming a doctor. And of course it could always be improved. <laughs> um, so I feel like I was definitely at a disadvantage, but because I had a particular mindset and because it was something I wanted to do and I was passionate about, and I had that focus and drive um, I worked really hard and I sourced out resources, sourced out opportunities uh, and made it a reality, really. So um, I hope that my story or my narrative is a testimony to, to, to the fact that actually you, you it may be hard, but you can have a, a dream and you can, like my motto says, you can have a, have a big dream, uh, but make sure that you have a plan and you think smart about how you're going to make this dream a reality. Uh, and like I said, always inspire other people as you go along the way. So I think if I was to choose one narrative, I think it would be the narrative or the story of wanting to become a doctor and doing everything I could within my power to make that happen. That is wonderful to hear, Dr. Baptist. And I think hearing this story right now, we can totally understand your motto of uh, starting Dream Smart Tutors as well. To that platform, I understand that you have been doing such an important job of mentoring um, because um, I have said this in previous episode of our podcast as well, that coming into medicine was not my conscious decision. Um, I didn't know what I was jumping into. So you going to them and telling them what it is actually like to be a doctor, telling them what you need, what you could expect from this profession and how can we make most of this? It's, I think, in itself a great deal for many more students like us. Um, I understand that they have been benefited a lot uh, from your mentoring and from your work. But here, what I would like to know is, has it in any way affected your life to be a better person or in any way possible? Um, I think even just meeting people like yourself, you know, young people, medical students who look up to me, it makes me want to be a better person. It makes me want to be a very good leader. 
uh, you know, I think we're all human. And there are many times when I look back, even when I was doing Dream Smart Choose and I was working with other people, um, you know, you have some conflicts. And I do feel that I could have handled many things in a much better way. But it's about growing and about maturing. And I think you have to learn from your experiences. So I feel like I'm in a very privileged position, not only as a doctor, but also as a role model. And I am very conscious of how I um, portray myself, how I act and I, how I treat other people. And I always try and just be a good person. You know, um, I try and be humble. Uh, I try and just, yeah, just be a good person. And, you know, I try and just treat people how I want to be treated. And like I said, no one is perfect. I'm human and we all make mistakes, but it's about trying to learn from those mistakes. So yeah i think for me uh, i i feel a great responsibility to uh lead by example like you said so yeah i think um, i'm just i'm just very um i'm always uh and i'm going a bit off topic but i'm always not surprised but i'm always just i just have this lovely feeling when you guys tell me oh you look up to me because yeah i just don't i just do the things that i enjoy and i try to inspire people and when i get that feedback it really makes me want to do more and more good so so it's like a cycle so, <laughs> so yeah i just want to be a, a good person and just try and help people in any way that i can it doesn't always have to be you know people always think you have to um, give money to a good cause it could be giving your time uh, or just listening to someone so i try and just make small um small small changes or small contributions um and sometimes they make very big impacts um so or impact so so i hope that answers the question <laughs> that was so wonderful to hear dr Baptiste. um it's basically about human emotions and connecting and understanding each other to build a better world and while we were preparing for the podcast, we also got to know that you're very fond of poetry from a very young age. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Few of us here are poets as well. Monita writes really good poems. Okay. Oh, wow. I try writing. I don't know. Like, how <laughs> We all try. We all try. I say I'm a poet, but I'll let everyone else be the judge of that. You know, I let I'll let people call me a poet. You know, <laughs> because like you said, you try. You know, and um, you do you do what you your best, and you let the audience be the judge. <laughs> uh, so, Doctor Patrice, uh, what we've felt and what we think uh, we have been reading or we have been understanding is physicians must be empathetic. But this is my personal experience that. Once you see so many pain, so much of pain, so much of suffering when you go to the ward, you somehow become immune to that and many things don't trouble you and maybe you lose the essence of, uh, you know, having emotions or having conversations and you just look at the disease and just sort of a disease. So how important could poetry be in order for medical students to express themselves and would poetry and emotions also help us become a better clinician. What is your view on that? Uh, I think anything creative or anything outside of medicine will definitely help you um, with your own personal development and also with becoming a doctor. Um, like you said, quite rightly so, when you see so many um, conditions of the same presentation or the same kind of similar uh, examples, uh, you do, I wouldn't say immune, but I would say you better control your emotions. Um, and I think over the years, you don't become cut off, but you kind of build a wall so that you don't cry in front of the patient, you know. <laughs> so I think you have to obviously have, it's a, it's a fine line. You have to obviously try and put yourself in the patient's shoes, try and take a moment to just understand what they could be going through. And I think... Being a patient yourself or having family members or friends who have gone through certain things definitely enhances your ability to have sympathy, have empathy. Uh, and I think it's often important for us to remember that or even just remember if this was a family member or a friend, would we want them to be treated in that way? And I think if you think about it in that way, then you shouldn't really ever be cut off or be immune to things and I think just being human I personally couldn't be immune but I'm better at now I'm you know as a GP I'm better at controlling my emotions I mean 
I think as a junior, it, it was quite stressful as well. So you have all that as well to you know, contend with. And I lost my gran in 2015. And I was taking my year out of training at that time. And I remember I saw an elderly lady and she reminded me of my gran. And I had tears, like a tear in my eye. Uh, and I really had to, you know, just take a moment to uh, <laughs> just take a breather because, you know, we, we are human. We have things going on in our lives. And so we have to be professional still, but it's hard. Uh, so I think doing things like poetry or being creative or just taking time outside of medicine definitely helps us connect with ourselves and in our, our emotions um so i think it'll always be a positive for you to do something outside of medicine it can only add to you being a better doctor um so yeah i think that i i hope i answered there was a few questions in there <laughs> so i hope i answered the questions um but yeah i think poetry for me has always been an outlet uh, even writing uh, like when i write for gp online which you may know about if you've looked at my videos um it really just it just helps me uh what's the word um i don't know just get back to a bit of patrice you know i'm, I'm dr baptiste in the work and in, on social media but really i am patrice you know and i enjoy loads of other things other than <laughs> medicine medical things um so for me poetry writing exercise it really helped me that's it reconnect that was the word i was looking for reconnect with uh patrice reconnect with myself and i think you need that self that's me time uh and that time to just do things outside of your day-to-day -day studies day-to-day -day work um and like i said it can only add to um to to your profession but your mental health as well and i think if i didn't have the outlets um i would struggle which is why i struggled in training because i found that I didn't have much time to do all the things that I was interested in doing or that enabled me to have a, um, a release, an outlet. So I love running and if I had a stressful day, I would look forward to a run. But then if you have a stressful day or you finish late, you can't go for a run. How do you release that tension? You know, <laughs> So it's hard. Uh, but I think it's, again, it's finding a balance and asking for help. You know, we're definitely going off topic here, but uh, asking for help and support. And I think a lot of times in medicine, um, we are kind of taught to going back to the emotional side of things where we're taught or we're in a culture where you shouldn't be emotional. You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't ask for help or you shouldn't show that you're um, you're suffering or that you're upset or something has affected you. And as doctors, it doesn't make any sense how we can do this to ourselves. You know? <laughs> we encourage people to seek help and seek support, but we don't do that for ourselves. <laughs> um, one of the big things I really don't like in medicine and one of the cultures is that when you're ill, you should still come to work. Uh, you know, there's a guilt that goes with that, I suppose, if your colleagues are going to be struggling. Of course, you want to come in. But I always say, you know, there's that saying, how can the sick treat the sick? We have to look after ourselves first. And I think we would not if we don't look after ourselves. So, yeah, <laughs> that goes back with if you have a creative outlet, try and hold on to it. And if you're struggling to hold on to it, uh, please seek some support or speak to someone about it and how maybe you can dedicate some time to pursuing that alongside your studies or your profession. Dr. Baptist, these were very nice words from you. Uh, I want to say something. As far as we get to know you through your videos, uh, we have portrayed you as an enthusiastic, multi-talented, successful, and happy person with a portfolio career. I try to I find, be happy. I try. <laughs> I find this very insp inspiring. Uh, you have touched many dimensions like guiding young generations through dream, uh, smart tutors, writing and publications, working as a medical examiner and making YouTube uh, videos to help around the world, including all others, keeping uh, your medical practice at the center. Hmm. What was the question? How do I do that? How do I do all of that? Yeah. How, do you, uh, oh. how do you manage your time? Uh, I don't sleep. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that's a very good question. I actually have a whole video on time management. I think for me, like I said, um, when you enjoy doing something, you make the time for it. Uh, so 
you know, in my spare time, if I've got a, an hour to relax, I might write uh, an article for GP Online or I might shoot a YouTube video. I may edit a YouTube video. Um, you know, I may, uh, you know, I don't know, go for a run or something. So I think I, I just, I always try and just, well, for one, I have a to-do list, which it probably works against me because it makes me worry about the things I'm not doing. <laughs> but I always have a to-do list. I always prioritize. I always, if I have, I always think about what can I achieve in a particular day. So today I have a number of things I wanted to get through. Of course, the podcast was top of the list. One of the important things I had to do. Um, but then there were a few other things I had to do, like a YouTube video. Um, I had to sort that out. So I made a point of doing that. Um, and then I know that there's only so much time in the day. So if there is a task that I feel will take me 30 minutes, then I'll say, okay, well, I'll do this at this day where I have that time slot. There's no point in me trying to fit in a project that's going to take me four hours in a time slot of 30 minutes when I know it's not possible. Uh, you know, so I try and just be practical. I try and have a plan. Like, again, if you know me from the videos, you know, I always plan and prepare. So, um, writing things down definitely helps me. I'm more of a, a visual person. I, I try and write a lot of things down as well. So just, yeah, just um, keeping on track of what I have to do and, and the urgency of the tasks. So I don't always write down how urgent they are, but I have a list of all the things I have to do. Um, and then I just, in my head, I know, okay, well, if I've got a deadline of next week for the article, I may, I may start it, let's say if it's Monday, I may start it the Monday beforehand. And either I finish it or I don't, I do half of it and then I come back to it. Um, and I just, you know, like when you're at school or medical school, you have a number of different um, classes in the day of different subjects or different topics. And that's kind of how I still do it. I have a few different things that I'm juggling. And because I feel like sometimes I get bored or my concentration goes, I try and just juggle it in the day. So in the one day I may do three different things um, or for a short time and get it done that way. And I plan a, 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 like a, a far in advance as much as I can so I think that's probably a combination of how I manage to do things but yeah like I said I mean I definitely sleep but I'm always on the go and I think it comes from just yeah being a high achiever being someone who's just highly motivated and just enjoys what they're doing uh, so I have that push and I do it myself and I think people have asked me in the past though with medicine you know they, if they didn't know my backstory they will say oh did your parents ask you to do or tell you to do medicine? I said, if my parents told me to do medicine, I wouldn't have become a doctor. <laughs> I would have given up because it wasn't in a drive. So because I am driven to do all these different things, I can keep them up. So my, my not a question, but what I would say to you guys is that try and find things that you're interested and passionate about. And if you want to develop like a portfolio career or want to do or multiple things, do the things that you're interested in because if you do the things you're interested in you will be able to do them and do them well so you have multiple things doing at the same time uh and people will wonder again why how you're doing it but it's because you're interested and you enjoy it so it's not like it's not work you know it's not it's not a, um, a hassle for you to have to oh i've got to do this now i've got to do that because it, you enjoy it so i think that's the crux of how I'm able to juggle loads of different things. <laughs> Getting into medicine this year, I've really, really found it difficult, you know, give mm. same level of energy to all my projects I'm involved at a time. And that makes me choose one and discard others. And I think now listening to you, I can prioritize things better. I hope I can follow my passion and I can do uh, a lot better than now I'm doing. And I think I can get back and check and I can do like, like I can follow your tips and I can make you proud someday yeah I definitely learn from you because when I was a medical student I'm saying this now as a doctor he's worked part-time you know as a medical student full-time medical student it was hard for me and I do feel that I work too hard um you know I feel there are many times I could have spent half an hour writing poetry but I thought oh no 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 I don't have time for that I need to do this project I need to do this I need but actually there was time I just didn't prioritize it and that's that ultimately led me to being miserable sometimes because I wasn't having that outlet so yes even if it's half an hour 
um, just put the half an hour into your week or into a day and you'll find that it will definitely benefit you and you'll be able to um, have longevity in your project. So yeah, definitely try that. <laughs> and to add to that, Dr. Vip's piece, what he said, like having a creative outlet and mm -hmm. everything that's happening right now, this podcast and even the other projects that we're involved in, the lockdown has played, played a big role in that. And I'm someone who has done a lot of toxic studying because, you know, uh, medicine, they say, like, you need to study. And over two years, I was just a studying robot. And I used to skip pages from one book to the other, to the other, to the other. And I did not know who I was or what, what I was doing with my life. And that was pretty hard for me. Um, and what we advocate many a times to medical students coming here as well is that it's a lot of hard work and the only thing that you need to do is study and that's going to get you out of med school and you become a doctor so that's the narrative we are setting to each and every medical student here in nepal there might be situations different in the uk we would love to hear that from you and uh, as you said like you've written for gp online and we had read one article that you said that how our trainings could be more adequate, would be more humane, and I think that definitely should be. So what are your views on making our training more humane and more personalized? Like, What do you think should we do or should we teach our medical students who are going to come to medical school as well? Uh, I think it's difficult because the job of the medical schools is to make you a doctor, right? And that involves, you know, rigid assessments and making sure you, you're safe, which is very important. Um, I do think that maybe more medical schools could, if not factor in some time for creativity, but definitely point the students to some creative outlets or um, some signpost them to places. Uh, I think a lot of the time the onus is on yourself um, to pursue these other things. Um, but, it, you know, I think the number one, the training or the medical schools could maybe look into this a bit more, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. <laughs> but I think as students and as um, as a group um, or study groups or groups of friends, you guys can, you know, do this amongst yourselves and check in on each other as well and hold each other accountable. Uh, like I said, you know, looking back, I really wish that I hadn't just devoted six years to just studying and slogging away you know I could have done so much more but it was the mindset and I wish I had someone telling me you know you can do it and make sure you make some time for it and it's going to do you the world of good if you took some time out I mean don't get me wrong I, I you know I had friends I had a life you know? <laughs> but um, I feel like I could have utilized it more um, like even with publications, like if you watch my video, you know, I didn't get published until I was an F1, uh, you know, first year as a doctor. Um, and I think, I do think because a lot of those summers, I tried to not think of medicine. I try, I was, I think I was so traumatized by the amount of exams and stuff I had in the academic year that in the summer, I would just not do anything medicine. <laughs> uh, I didn't look into internships I didn't look into publications I just wanted to be free <laughs> basically um, but I think that's because I didn't have a good balance in the year I think if I had a good balance in the year I think I would have utilized my summers much more and better um, so I think it, the onus is on ourselves and we should hold each other accountable um, but yes the medical schools could also do a bit more um, to support us with being a bit more creative or just being you know, human. Because <laughs> um, looking back, when you apply to medical school, I'm sure it's the same globally. I'm sure all the medical students or majority of the medical students probably feel the same way. Uh, but looking back, you know, when you apply to medical school, you have to prove you're well-rounded and you are head of the sports team and all of these different things. And you still are performing at the top 1% in your class. <laughs> And then when you get to medical school, somehow all of that just changes. And then if you fall into the trap of not having that, uh, those outside interests or maintaining those creative outlets, when you become a doctor, I'm sorry, it just continues on that, that slope. So it's about also, yeah, doing it while you're in medical school um, and um, forming 
good habits now because when you become a doctor it's going to get worse <laughs> you know <laughs> you'll have less time probably uh, because you'll be on a rotor on calls but if you develop good habits now uh, and have a good group of people who can hold you accountable um, even if they're not there physically um, that is not just your friends but you know your, your family close people close relatives then I feel like you will be have a good foundation to do very well and to not burn out and to not have mental health problems but it's about having to to learn these habits and putting them into place now versus when you've already burnt out and you're you have depression and anxiety so yeah <laughs> that's what i would say about that one <laughs> what i would like to say here is you're living a dream, you're living a life that you had dreamt at the age of four, right? I know uh, this has been a long journey. Um, there have been uh, support from your surrounding, your uh, people around you who loves you, your family, your own hard work has been paid off. Uh, but I also understand that there might have been many setbacks, many hardships or downfalls. How did you tackle them? And would you like to share some of those tips with us and also what keeps you moving despite them all? I think you know about my, my main dip. <laughs> when I wasn't <laughs> sure if I was going to carry on, you know, being a doctor. Um, I think that was probably, looking back, one of the lowest points in my professional career, not even talking about my personal life, but my professional career. Because like you know, I wanted to become a doctor since I was a child and then to go through all those years of training sacrificing you know like you heard I'd study study something <laughs> and then become a doctor oh yeah happy days and then to wonder have I made the right decision you know and then I think a lot of people have shame because they feel that oh I, you know I shouldn't be talking this way you know I'm I've I'm you know being a doctor is a very privileged position I've worked so hard how could I not be happy you know pe a lot of people will feel embarrassed by admitting that they're not happy uh, even to themselves their family members who look up to them you know my parents they knew my story they were very proud of me oh my daughter's a doctor my daughter's a doctor whoever they can tell I'm sure your parents are the say my son or my daughter's doctor or medical studying medicine they're very proud and then you know you say to them oh I'm not enjoying it or I'm not happy how as a parent you know how they must feel how how can they tackle this how can they support you and I can only imagine how my parents felt when I was saying to them you know I I just not sure if I want to be a doctor anymore you know? um so for me even to admit that there was something wrong was a, you know um, a very low point because I had to admit it to myself first that I didn't enjoy it and I tried I really tried you know when it was hard I thought well this is just how it is you know maybe it's me you know I should be working harder or there's something I'm missing or there was just always I was always trying to find a reason but it was the, it was obvious to me it was the system that was the the issue um and I think once I realized that it wasn't necessarily me and it wasn't I didn't lack the passion it was just where I was and the system I was in then it became much easier for me to navigate and to decide what I wanted to do going forward so I think that was probably my lowest point and how I how I navigated it was yes doing some soul searching just taking some time for me as Patrice not Dr Baptiste and just your self-care and then just speaking to people and speaking to other doctors who are going through the same thing because I felt like in the hospital there are many doctors who are happy or many doctors who don't just don't talk, talk about it they're, they're not happy but they hide it or they're not happy and they just they don't hide it but they just get on with it and so who do you speak to you know so I stepped away from that environment and I spoke to other doctors who were feeling like I was feeling and I went to events that were not medical events just to experience life because my trajectory has been a very linear one. I've gone from school to medical school to working as a doctor. So I felt like I didn't really have that life experience. So I wanted to take some time to experience life a little bit. Um, and so, yes, I think that's how I kind of got through that, that low point in my life by looking back 
of the, who I about who I was and looking after myself, speaking to people, knowing that I wasn't alone and that I wasn't a freak, you know, <laughs> that it wasn't something I was an odd person for feeling this way, and then just realizing that it was the structural problems, you know, the hierarchies, the way the system was composed that made me feel that way, and it wasn't necessarily a problem with myself. Um, and then once I had done all of that, it was much easier for me to realize that. Um, I wanted to still be a doctor and it was just how could I still make a difference and still use my medical training to help others and so I chose general practice as you know so I think that's how I, I kind of manage through um, and pray I don't talk about God a lot but um, I'm I, I don't I, it's very I have to be very careful how I use the term religious um, because I say religious but I it's like a spectrum isn't it really but I'm catholic and I do believe in god and I, I you know I can't attribute any of my successes to just me being a superwoman because I'm not um I do believe that uh, god has directed my paths I believe that uh a lot of my success or all of my successes have become have come from god um when I look back at my exams, there were many exams that I feel like I shouldn't have passed because I, I feel like I was rubbish at some of the questions, but I passed, you know, so I hold that to a divine power, honestly, and people might think I'm mad for saying these things, but I, unless you go through it, it's difficult, you know, it's, it, it's hard to explain. So for me, there were things that have happened in my life that only I feel God could do and have, has done. So I, again, I can't just sit here and say to you, oh, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing so well because I'm just an amazing person because, you know, I'm not. I'm, anything that I have done and anything that you see me be successful in, I attribute to God. So I made sure I pray and, yeah, I prayed and I went to church. I went more often to church. And, yeah, and I think, you know, spending more time with God helped me again, Um just yeah remember why I chose medicine and that I still had good to do you know and um yeah <laughs> praying <laughs> well you're you're saying um, this that uh, sometimes you feel like you you're passing an exam that you may not have to uh, I, I'm feeling like you're telling my story because I've felt it <laughs> so many times. Uh, but Honestly, because there's exams and I'm sorry to cut you, but there's exams and I was like, I'm sure I failed that exam. And I'm like, please, God, please just help me pass this exam. I'll be, I'll do better the next time. Just help me pass. You know? <laughs> and he, I put every, every time. And you, you guys, if you've watched my videos, you know, the only time I failed was my um, GP exam and that's a whole nother discussion that's a whole nother discussion because um i i feel like god was teaching me a lesson in that failure um, and i needed to fail that exam so i talk about the non-spiritual things as to why i failed but there are as a whole conversation i could talk about with the spiritual reason as to why i failed that exam so 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 yeah <laughs> Um, Doctor, sorry to cut you. Sorry to cut you. I'm, I'm terrible at cutting people off. <laughs> um, for someone, uh, I was educated in a convent school with a lot of those Catholic values as well. So I understand the importance of prayer and every word that you're saying. I think it resonates with uh, surrendering yourself to higher power and overall mental health, and that you're not mm. alone. Uh, but it becomes kind of difficult, and you have said a lot of things, but what concrete advice would you give to us millennials, because we are focused on CVs and so many credentials and what we can achieve, what we get to show, and mm -hmm. it's a bit of achievement, and you define yourself with achievement. So as a medical student or as a team of medical students or as a class of medical school, how can we support each other and not be competitive? But I don't know, like what, what advice would you give to medical students like us? I think competition, some level of competition is very good. You need it um, to do better in yourself as well. And also competition with other people, but also competition with yourself and always striving to be better. I think one of the main things I would say is just focus on you, focus on 
your development in like we said the spiritual side if you're spiritual or religious the mental health side the academic side and try not to worry too much about what everyone else is doing it's it's easier said than done look you know i know okay <laughs> but it's about trying to make a conscious effort of that um and just trying to work at it every day like even me i've said many times in my videos i'm not the most of positive positive of uh, people i work really hard to stay positive you know sometimes the day is going rubbish and I, I have to try i struggle to find something positive you know <laughs> so trying to have a, a develop the, the the habits the good habits now and the foundations now because life is going to be full of ups and downs there's always going to be something bad around or negative or not so good around the corner then there's always going to be a, a happy day around the corner and i think it's about trying to train yourself and, and, and develop a very good, positive, strong mindset. Um, so focus on yourself um, and try not, just try not to worry too much because again, I've said it in many interviews, you know, I'm, I'm a, naturally a warrior. I think many medical students are probably <laughs> warriors, um, whether they admit it or not, or, you know, they're aware of it, we worry. Like you said, different things about publications, jobs, are we gonna pass an exam? If we fail, what's going to happen? But honestly, there were many things I've worried about, which I can't even remember what, what I was worrying about. <laughs> you know, um, at the time, it was very important, I suppose, as a worry. But looking back, I could have spent a lot of time just being happy. <laughs> and I would say you guys are in the, like a very privileged position there are many young people or people who want to get into medical school you are in a perfect position and remember and count your blessings you know a lot of time we get caught up with oh we're not where we want to be or we have to get this we have to do that but just take a moment and i would say take a moment i'll challenge you every day take a moment to count your blessings your family your friends your health you know your medical school what you've done beforehand you know all the things you can think of even write it down and force yourself to look at it and remind yourself i'm in a very good position i'm very fortunate i'm very blessed i'm very privileged um because often we are in the future oh you know i i need to get here this time i need to do this i need to be the best i need but we forget to be in the present or we're in the past or we failed this exam or we didn't do well at this or we fell out with this person you can't live in the past, you can't live in the future, you have to live in the present. And I have to also consciously remind myself to live in the, be in the present. If I find um, my mind is wandering, which is like mindfulness, I suppose, I try and bring myself back, be in the present. Um, there is something called the worry tree, which is something they use, I think, in like CBT or counseling for anxiety and worry. And it's about, if you have a worry, um, is there anything you can do about it at that time in, in that particular moment? Because if you can't, then try and let the worry go. If you can, try and put a plan in place of how you're going to tackle that particular worry. And hopefully that should reduce your anxiety or reduce your worry. Sometimes people use um, worry times where you have a moment where you're, you dedicate some time to worrying. I, I, I don't know, <laughs> I haven't tried that, but some people might try it and it might work for them. Um, but yeah, I think that one of the things I would say, if you are a worrier like myself, try and acknowledge that, yes, you're worrying and acknowledge, is it a real worry? Is it something that you need to put a plan in place for? Um, and if it's not a real worry or something you're just anticipating could happen, but may not happen, then try and let it go. Because life is too short. We know in the pandemic, look, a lot of people have lost their lives. Um, you know, you may have lost someone close to you or a friend or know someone who has. And so, and even as a medical student, you know how you see death, you've seen what can happen to the human body. You see that you could be 40 and have an autoimmune condition and your life could be turned upside down. So if you know all of these things, try and re consciously remind yourself and then say, well, actually, I'm going to use that to try and become a better person or to be a happier person. You know, I think we have inner peace comes, you know, it, peace comes with from ourselves and, you have to try and find this peace somehow and find a way of maintaining that peace. Because like I said, life is the roller coaster and you could be searching for peace and searching for things and you may never find it. It's about looking within yourself and trying to find it within yourself. So I think those are probably my biggest <laughs> 
tips from my own personal experience as well um, and from what I've seen from other people. So, yeah, please, my biggest, biggest, biggest one is try not to worry so much. Things will fall into place in the end. They will. Trust me, they will. Um, uh, so learn from me. Don't worry so much. <laughs> they're so insightful words and uh, thank you for thank you for this uh, now i want to ask you a question um, in your view uh, what is the most important quality that every doctor or medical personnel should must have uh, if you want if you have to choose uh, one one and only one and uh, what is that word and that uh, that quality that's a very difficult question um, because there are so many uh, and I'm not sure I could pick one to be honest we've already spoken about empathy and sympathy patience you know listening I think um, I, I really can't pick one but I will talk a little bit about listening uh, I think even as a leader I think um, you have to you should listen to other people but Sometimes we have a conversation and we don't we don't know we're doing it sometimes, but we're not actually listening. We are thinking about how we can respond or how we can get our point across or how we can get our agenda across. And I think sometimes you have to just stop and stop thinking about yourself and just try and listen, actually listen to what that person is saying. Many times patients have said to me, um, they've had certain symptoms and it doesn't really make sense you know sometimes it just doesn't fit that textbook uh, condition but the patient knows themselves and many times patients have said to me I know my body I know this isn't right for me and you know you have to stop and listen and because if you don't you could be missing something and overlooking something and so I feel like it's really important to not just with patients but with your own colleagues or family so just listen and just listen to what they're saying and try and actively respond not just respond you know um in, as or not not answer the question as to what you think they're saying if that makes sense try and really understand and grasp what they're trying to convey or get across to you rather than what you think they're trying to say or anticipating it and trying to get a response over based on your own assumptions does that make sense I feel like I'm talking rubbish <laughs> but I would say I think listening is so is so important like truly listening <laughs> yes oh we do tend to come from our own uh, predefined tendencies and paradigms that we already have and trying to accept um, what someone is saying that takes a lot of security you know to break the wall and let the uh, let that come through you Okay, so yeah, I guess that's uh, what you were trying to say. Yes, and exactly. I'm so I'm glad you understood. I'm glad I hope people understood. <laughs> Dr. Patrice, uh, we as uh, medical students from a developing country like Nepal, we kind of feel uh, we are left behind from the international platform, especially in terms of critical thinking, uh, being exposed to research from early on med school, quality improvement projects, audits, and presenting in international conferences. It's like a usual thing in other, um, like let's say countries like UK, but for us, that's like, we only get to hear about it on YouTube and it's not really incorporated in our curriculum. So what advice would you like to give to us uh, in order to become an internationally competent doctors in the future? I think you've mentioned some of it already, actually, just staying in the loop, um, speaking to people like myself, um, you know, doctors, you can contact doctors. I'm sure many of them will be interested in giving you some advice, like I try and do for my videos or through just my contact with many of you via social media. I think the advantage that you guys have of your generation compared to people in your country many years before you was the Internet and the social media. You know, even in my generation, when I was applying to medical school, I didn't have access to social media on the level it is now compared to some people who are in medical school at this current time. So use 
the internet, use social media to your advantage, try and contact people and just stay in the loop like you're doing. Um, there's always going to be projects, always going to be things out there. It's just about sourcing that. And unfortunately, if your medical school isn't able to guide you, which is not unique to maybe it's exaggerated where you are, but it's not unique to just your 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 situation or your medical school. There are many medical schools who don't actively provide some of the practical things or some of the things you need to build your portfolio. Um, many medical students from the UK have asked me for advice about how to build a portfolio, how to boost their CV. I did a video on how to boost your CV because people asked me, you know, what do I do? I'm lost. You know, I, I'm not taught any of this at medical school. So take some, maybe take some comfort that it's, you're not alone. Um, but like I said, it may be a bit more exaggerated in Nepal. Um, but you've got an advantage in the sense that you have access to the internet, social media, and you can con contact people in the UK, contact people in the US. And I'm sure if you keep persevering, you'll find people who could be your mentor or people who could just give you advice. And YouTube is a wonderful resource. Like, I feel like I should have used YouTube um, to, again, do what you're doing, to maybe look out for people and, 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 and find useful resources. I feel like I should have used it more when I was a student because there are so many things on YouTube that can really help you. So keep an eye out um, and just stay, stay in the loop and I'm sure you will be fine. But like I've said in my videos, you know, try and get a publication. It doesn't have to be very big, you know. Um, even I have, uh, you may have, you must have heard of PubMed. Um, and I have an article in PubMed. I didn't even know it was an article in PubMed. Um, I <laughs> I wrote an opinion piece for the student BMJ in the UK here. And someone had asked me, oh, what do I, how can I get a publication? Just on Twitter, actually. And they said, oh, one has to be searchable in PubMed. And, and then I did a quick search in PubMed for my name. And it came up with um, a very short, like, opinion piece or some tips for medical students or something like that. I didn't even know. And I said, well, here, have look at that link. You can write something similar or something, you know, an opinion piece and kind of, you know, it will it, sure it could be searchable in that way. So people often think about massive, massive projects. If you have no previous publishing experience and no mentor or no guidance, try and start with something very basic. Um, and that would even be in um, publications that you could find in Nepal, I'm sure. Because when I, my first, one of my first publications was, um, a very very short piece about taking a year out of training and I got paid for it as well it was from the BMA BMA news they had another additional publication and it was very short and it's a publication and it's something I can add to my CV and I got paid for it which is great as well so try and um, aim high of course but you have to build your experience as well so whether that's with a quip a quality improvement project an audit an opinion piece Many of my opinion pieces, if you look, if you're connected with me on LinkedIn or you watch my video, you will see a lot of my opinion pieces are based on something I've read, whether that's a survey or something I've come across. And then I've just put my spin on it, my own unique take on it. And I've submitted it to the BMJ or submitted it somewhere and they've accepted it. And to be honest, you know, it was good. But I look back, I think it could have been better, but they accepted it. So it must have been a, a good quality that, you know, they've accepted it. Um, but I, maybe that goes back to being the perfectionist or the type of personality that we have, isn't it? Where we think, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be accepted. I think it could be better, but I'm going to see. And then they accept it. And you're like, oh, wow, that, that must be good then. But you have to you have to <laughs> have someone accept your publication for you to believe that it's, it's really good isn't it so I would say try and start small try and stay in the loop speak to each other and please you know bounce off of each other share things with each other I also feel when I went to UCL even before when I was at school um there were like maybe five people who applied to medicine and I feel like there were a few people who were very secretive they didn't want to share resources they didn't want to share information I'm sure you're smiling because you know in medical school people are very secretive they don't want to share we all want to be doctors we all want to achieve the same goal so if you can find a handful of people who are willing to help you and you're willing to help them please hold on to those people and share 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 um bring each other up and I really wish that I had a few good people who helped me but I wish that it wasn't so secretive and so competitive um, as it was. So please, you know, try and support each other. And if you've come across something, 
um, on the internet or a competition, you can all submit for it, or you can work together and submit together. You can all be co-authors, you know, many things. Mm -hmm. So that would be my advice about, you know, trying to build your uh, CV, build your credibility, build your portfolio. It can be done. That was such a great advice, Dr. Baptiste. Um, we should definitely work on that. We should build more connections and explore opportunities in the area that interests us. And of course, we should help each other out as we go on. And we should start somewhere, even if it is small, one day we will reach where we want to. That is incredible advice. Uh, so to spice things up a little bit, we have a very fun game of rapid fire lined up. Oh, uh, no. I'm not good at this. Someone did this with me before and I was <laughs> terrible. So I'll try my best. I, I, yeah, I presume course. we're coming to the end. So you want to do a quick... <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll try. Out. I'll try. If you, you know about me, I speak a lot. So uh, I'll try and give a <laughs> short yeah, answer. Sure. sure, it's okay. So shall we start? Yes, okay. yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, books or movies? Uh, books. All right. Night owl or early bird? Early bird. Tea or coffee? Tea. Queen or the Beatles? <laughs> uh, oh, God. Uh, can I pass? <laughs> <laughs> you uh, could choose one. Oh, God. I, I, I will say the Beatles. I'm sorry. Sorry, okay. Queen. <laughs> Sorry to our majesty. <laughs> um, physicians or surgeons? Oh, physicians. Okay. Um, what is happiness for you? In one word. Is it meant? <laughs> you, uh, you could say in a sentence. Happiness. One sentence. Happiness for me um, is just being, being at peace and being with my family. Uh, and just yeah, having family time, having me time, and no worries, just being in the moment. Me time is very important indeed. Uh, life in one word. Life. Yes. Uh, a, a journey. That's incredible. Your journey in a sentence. Oh my gosh, this is getting harder. <laughs> My journey, my journey is not over yet, you see. Uh, so the start of my journey is working hard to become a doctor, enjoying life as a doctor, and seeing where what the future holds. What do you do when you are sad? I cry. <laughs> I cry, I admit I cry. Um, when I'm sad, I do cry, I'll be honest, I do cry. I think I cry too much, actually. Is that bad? Is that bad admission? <laughs> it's really not. Um, it eases your heart when you cry out. I think I'm an emotional person. I'm a very emotional. I, I, people say, they use the word empath. I think, I, I feel like I pick up on emotions very easily. Um, and maybe that's why I cry a lot. <laughs> uh, when I'm sad, um, when I'm sad, uh, I try and take some time to myself and I try and understand why exactly what's made me sad and how I can rectify or how I can overcome it. Um, I'm a very like practical or logical person. I try and think of solutions to things. So I think I'd be working about how can I get a solution to this thing that's made me sad. <laughs> okay. that's, that's really good. Uh, and you did really well in the over to the host. It was so fun, Dr. Baptist. <laughs> I think we all enjoyed it. Oh, that's and really good. Really um, yeah, we, as you had uh, predicted a bit earlier, we are almost at the end of this uh, session. At the end, although you have already covered so many things, um, I'd like to ask from all the medical students, uh, on, on behalf of all the medical students, what advice would you like to give um, and any final words that you'd like to say to all of us? Uh, just be happy, please try and be happy. You know, 
and being happy doesn't mean you have to be rich. It doesn't mean you have to have a massive mansion and a massive car, Porsche or Audi or whatever the favorite car it is. I don't know at the time. Just being happy, like I said, when I'm when you ask me the question, the rapid fire, being happy is when I'm with my family, you know, um, because I know like with my parents, they they're not old, but they they're not young, you know, <laughs> and they're getting older, you know, and so I try and cherish cherish the time, even when I was younger, and you know, a lot of young people don't want to spend time with their family, their parents, they think, oh, they're boring. I love spending time with my parents and my family because, like I said, I know they're not going to be here forever, um, and if you know, doing medicine and seeing what I've seen, and you guys probably can resonate. You know that you don't even have to be a medic. You don't even have to you know, be a medical student, you know how precious life is. And I think for me, I'm very keen to spend spend the most of, of as much time as I can with the people that mean the most to me. So for me, yes, I try just try and be happy and spend as much time as you can with your loved ones and focusing on what is important to you. And like I said, it does, you know, it doesn't have to be a massive house and a massive car we all want to be comfortable we all want to have those you know creature comforts and that's fine but try and you know find out what's what's important to you and try and make incorporate it make the most of that um of what is important to you and like i said for me that's spending time with my family um so yeah that, i guess that'll be my last my final 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 one <laughs> i think um whatever this pandemic did, it connected people and it brought the world together because we were having the same experiences. And many a times our day in our lives are so different based on the geographical area that we stay, but the whole world came together to have one single experience. And the pandemic made us meet you. And it was like you were resonating our words and we would love to meet you. Like, unfortunately, Time passes and memories remain, and that's what happens all the time with life. But will we see you anywhere around in the town of Kathmandu here in Nepal? Would it be any time soon? <laughs> I'd love to meet you. I would love to meet you guys. I was even saying, I was even thinking as you before you said that, I'd, I'd love to meet you guys like I don't know, every couple of months just to see how you're getting on and if I can support you guys. You know, I, of course, I'm busy, but. I'm sure I could spare half an hour or with an hour we spent today just having a chat and anywhere I can maybe like some kind of mentorship or something where it may be small things I could offer you guys but just anything and just being that person to help support you on your journey so um I'd love to physically definitely one day uh, when all this is over I'd love to come and you know see you guys in person see where you live well maybe not where you're living but where your medical school is you know, <laughs> whatever you want to show me I'd love to come and visit um and yeah just that would be great but I think maybe going forward because of the situation um definitely I'd be open to just checking in with you guys and supporting you guys in any way that I can that was so wonderful Dr Patrice and we would love to have you as our mentor to talk to you more and see you here in Nepal and meet you physically hope that day comes soon I hope so I hope so just uh, beginning our podcast journey mentorship from uh, someone like you would uh, really help us along the way thank you so much for um, even you saying that uh, I mean coming to this is already a uh, magical experience and you saying that yeah you're willing to help us more it feels um it feels really good thank you so much oh uh, that's okay yeah i mean it's a very it's something very small i can do to help like a half an hour a couple in, in a couple of months or so you know I, I can always schedule some time in my diary so yeah that's nothing that's nothing at all i know it means a lot to you guys i know it does um but it's very very small but if it's something i can do to help then i'm happy to help so yeah but yeah i'm gonna go i guess it's been over an hour <laughs> and time flies when you're having fun isn't it you forget you don't realize time goes um but yeah it was lovely speaking to all of you and finally meeting you guys and um you guys are honestly you are doing amazing i don't know if many people tell you that often but you are doing fantastically okay you're doing wonderfully well wherever you are on your path um and you're, you're gonna go on to do amazing things so 
Um, if people don't tell you that often, I'm going to tell you you're doing just fine. So just enjoy where you are, okay? All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Baptist, for accepting okay. our invitation. And I will all see you again in the next episode. Bye bye. We can say a big bye to everyone. <laughs> 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 bye. See you.